Hey, what's up guys? This is the Tenanova MX6. It's a mesh Wi-Fi 6 system that covers up to 6,000 square feet. I'm gonna unbox this thing, do some speed tests, both in wired and wireless backhaul, and do some range tests. So, looking at the back, it has a speed rating of AX1800. It is a dual band system, and it's more of a budget-friendly mesh system. So, what is a mesh, and how is it different from a regular router? Well, a mesh system is two or more devices where at least one of them is a router. So it's designed to replace your router and eliminate Wi-Fi dead zone. So you could see a good depiction over here. So three of these act in unison to create a single network. So you connect to one Wi-Fi name, one SSID, and when you walk throughout your home, if you're closer to this guy, I'll connect you here, or I'll connect you here, or here, as you pretty much get closer to each node. Okay. Very nicely packaged. It's a three pack. Each one has three gigabit ports. You have your, I'm not sure what this mesh button does, probably connects to the nodes. I have a factory reset and the power switch. And that's pretty much what it looks like. And there's a little sticker here. I'll peel that off. And yeah, that's pretty much what it looks like. And so the other two are exactly the same thing. And probably comes with three power plugs and an ethernet cable with some instructions. So let's open up one of these. So this is the power supply, the AC to DC converter. So this is 100 to 240 volts, and this is what the plug looks like. So it's pretty compact, which is nice. It does say Nova on the side. And the same exact power plug, and the same exact power plug. And this is an ethernet cable. It doesn't tell us if it's Cat5e or Cat6 or Cat7, but I'm assuming it is at least Cat5e, which supports gigabit speeds. And we have some instructions on how to set up Granted, these things are pretty easy to set up. Much, much, much later. It's been two weeks since I've unboxed this thing. I've been using it as my main mesh system, and so far it's so good. So no drops, something like that. There was only one issue, which was when I was initially setting it up, it had trouble detecting my internet. So it was picking the static internet, where it had to pick the dynamic, where it automatically gets the IP address and all the other stuff that it needs. And so I had to basically toggle that in the app several times so it took a total of five minutes or so and then it finally detected my internet and then after that it was good to go so no issues whatsoever after that all right so in that two weeks i had a chance to do all the speed test range tests so i used my iphone 13 pro max which is my wi-fi 6 device now this is a wi-fi 6 mesh system but i also used both my pixel 6 pro and the Galaxy S22 Ultra, which both support Wi-Fi 6E. So it's kind of been my experience that even though this is a Wi-Fi 6 system, Wi-Fi 6E devices typically, or can do a little bit better than Wi-Fi 6 devices. And they are, uh, Wi-Fi 6E is backwards compatible with Wi-Fi 6. So I ran those tests as well. And let's jump straight in with the numbers. So. Starting with the internet speed test, no matter how fast the router is or mesh system is, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speed. So in my case, my internet speeds are 940 megabits per second download and 880 megabits per second upload. And notice I said megabits per second, not megabytes per second, because one byte is equal to eight bits. So there's a huge difference uh, between those two numbers, but all the numbers I tell you guys are gonna be in megabits per second. So looking at the results, we could see that both the Wi-Fi 6 and the Wi-Fi 6E did fairly similar to each other. The Wi-Fi 6 actually did a little bit better in the upload speeds, but right around the same. Now to truly isolate this mesh system, I get rid of my ISP and the public speed test server from the equation by making my computer into a local speed test server. And I will be doing a video on this on how to actually do that. But for the purposes of this video, essentially my computer becomes a server and I go from phone to router to my computer, which is now a server, isolating the router, which results in typically much better speeds, both in download and in upload. As you guys can see in the single router configuration, there's a massive jump in speeds, especially for the download. So that was the single router configuration, which means, let's say this was my main router, I would go from phone to router to computer. Now in the wired backhaul, 
that's when these are connected to each other via Ethernet. There could be a switch in between them and stuff. And I do a speed test server from the secondary one. So I go from the secondary one to the primary router to the server and I pretty much get very, very similar speeds, which is what I would expect over wired backhaul. And for wireless backhaul, this is where it really took a hit. So a definite drastic reduction in speeds. And that's because this is a dual band system with an AX1800 speed rating. So, it, so dual band systems can't go quite as fast, typically. Not always the case, but usually they, there's usually a drastic speed reduction when you're doing wireless backhaul. And this is why I typically recommend tri-band, if not the quad-band or B, if you're gonna do wireless backhaul. So in those cases, you usually get better speeds in the wireless backhaul. And wireless backhaul is essentially the same thing as wired backhaul, except you remove the ethernet between them. So you go, I do the speed test from the phone to the secondary system that's wirelessly connected to this guy, which is connected via ethernet to my computer. So, now jumping on to range test. So now range will vary based on location. You know, if you're between floors, if you're in a building with a lot of other routers around, if you have a lot of walls, if you have thick walls, all of this stuff can hurt your range. If you're in a super open area, then you're gonna possibly, not most likely get much better range. So I'm now in more of an open area. I'm not gonna say it's super open, but it's more open than where I used to be. And so at 20 feet away, I'm pretty much in the, in the place direct line of sight to the router and I get some very good speeds. At 50 feet away, I'm outside, so there is a wall or two blocking the signal. And then this thing takes me all the way up to 180 feet, which again, for something of this price range, that's pretty impressive. Now jumping over to the 10 app, this is what you use to set this thing up and configure it. And it is available both on Android and on iOS. So you can set this whole thing up using your phone alone and it's good to go. The only issue I had with the app, it was upon initial setup, it had trouble detecting my internet, so I had to toggle between the options, and I finally detected it five minutes later. So that was really my only issue. In terms of user interface, it's more of a basic interface, so it gives you all the main options and stuff, and it's not really like an ooh la la app, it's just kind of like focus and like, oh, these are your options, and uh, it's, it's more of a basic interface than anything else. Now, is it worth getting these? Why or why not? Well, it all depends on your situation. I would say this would be a good fit for anyone with speeds of up to gigabit that's going to use wired backhaul that doesn't need a crazy amount of range. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave it in the comment sections below. As always, smash that subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.